Hey everyone, Dave here with davidspassage.com. Today, we're waterproofing stuff. Stick around. So if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, over the last year especially, I've been carrying around this. This is a haversack my buddy Jahia custom made for me. I absolutely love this thing. And over the last year, it's kind of gotten a little bit more flexible than I like. And I want to make sure it's nice and waterproof before I head out on the river. So what I thought I'd do is I'm going to make up some solution that I'm going to use for this, not only this, but I'm going to waterproof all of my leather goods and some cotton goods with it. And so I thought I'd show you what I'm going to do to do it. And uh, hopefully maybe you can make some for yourself and wax waterproof all your stuff. <laughs> so here we go. So to do this, you're only gonna need a few ingredients. First of all, you're gonna need either beeswax or paraffin wax. You're also gonna need some turpentine and some boiled linseed oil. And I'll put links in the description if you wanna pick some of these up on Amazon and help support the channel. As far as beeswax versus paraffin, to be honest with you, I don't know the you know, I don't know that there's a huge difference. A lot of the recipes I've been researching go either way with it. If paraffin's cheaper for you, go for it. If you can get a hold of some beeswax, go for it. Again, I'll put a link in the description where you can pick some up. So the recipe calls for two parts wax, hard wax, the beeswax or the paraffin, to one part turpentine to one part boiled linseed oil. So the first step in the process is to take the beeswax and sort of cut it up in order to make it a lot easier to render down. Let's go ahead and do that. Before we get started in the actual cooking process, I do want to say this is sort of a disclaimer. It's very suggested that you do this outside and away from open flames because obviously we have some flammable ingredients here. Having said that, I'm in a very well ventilated room and um, as you can see that is not an open flame source. So very well ventilated. I would highly suggest you do this outside if you can, if at all possible. And to get started, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna add some water to this pan. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna double boil the wax, or I guess in a sense, you know, use it as a double boiler so that I don't burn the wax. Go ahead and add some more water here. Just enough so I can get, you know, again, I can melt the wax without burning it. While that's going, I'm just gonna take my wax and begin to chop it up. The other thing you're gonna need for this, you're gonna need a container to put it all in when you're done. And I'm just gonna use a couple of small bread pans. As I get some of these shavings, I'm gonna start to add it to the pan there as that, that water under there is warming up. So I'm gonna let that render down and turn into a liquid before I do anything else. This whole process probably takes oh, about an hour, you know, between cracking up the wax, melting it down, adding your solutions. All right, so now that all of my wax is completely melted, I'm gonna take this heat and reduce it down all the way to low because now is when I'm gonna start adding in, you know, the chemicals. I just wanna keep this liquefied and the first one I'm gonna add is the boiled linseed oil. I did um, half a pound, so I wanna do four ounces of boiled linseed oil. And then I'm just gonna kinda of gradually just sort of stir it in. Now I've reduced my heat quite a bit. You can see it's kinda of getting darker there. Everything's nice and mixed up there. I actually shut this off, because it looks like it's gonna stay warm enough for me. All right, so now I'm gonna add my turpentine. Be very careful not to splash it. Ooh, that smells really good. I like the smell of turpentine. <laughs> Am I crazy? Probably, but this kind of thins it out a little bit more. Just about a half cup there. And again, be very careful. I'm just gonna stir that into the mixture as well. So now that I'm done melting and rendering this, just to sort of help this solidify just a little bit faster, I'm gonna actually remove this pan from the heat. Go ahead and transfer it to another surface. And I'm just gonna keep stirring this. I'm not gonna stir it until it cools all the way down. I just wanna make sure everything is nice and mixed up in there. So I've been stirring for quite a while. I'm happy with its sort of viscosity, if you will. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into my containers. Pour my solution in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let that set overnight and uh, we'll get back with you in the morning. All right, so it's now the next morning and here are my two batches solidified. So. Let me show you how I use it. What I'll just do is I'll take my wax that I've made, get a good build up on that brush, and just sort of go around and give a nice layer of that wax right on there. Just kind of spread that wax out nice and thin. 
nice and even I should say. And I like to pay a special attention to the seams. Make sure the wax gets in those seams really good. This is my axe sleeve here. I'll even go right on the leather. So the last thing I'm going to do here before I hang it up to dry, I'm going to let it, I'm going to hang it up to dry for a, a few several days so that uh, those oils can can dry and stiffen up a bit. I'm just going to take a hair dryer and begin to go over it and melt that wax right into the fibers of the pack. All right, so welcome back. Just for a point of reference, I'm actually finishing this video up five months after I initially waterproofed it. I know you're not gonna see that on video, but after shooting the first part of this video, I went on canoe trips, kayak trips, I've been hiking with it. I wanted to do it like this because I wanted to show you just how cool this waterproofing solution is. So the ultimate test obviously is to get it wet. So we're gonna do that now. And I'm just gonna put it in this bucket so I don't make a mess. But just so that you can see what happens with the water. Sheds right off. Beads up on there. Even, even several months later, the water just, just glides right off of that waterproofing solution. So this is a method that you can use on any kind of cotton fabric. It works great on you know, the duck cloth that my haversack's made out of. Um, you know, I've used it to waterproof little ditty bags that I've made and things like that. I've even used it to waterproof my Frost River Packer to just sort of add that extra layer of protection to keep it waterproof. So, and I guess what I'd like to know is, is if you have a DIY waterproofing recipe that you'd like to share, please leave it in the comments below. Maybe you know one that's better than that one. Who knows? But I'd love to hear from you guys and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it or even if you've used something like this, what you've used it on. What kinds of projects have you used it on and what kinds of gear have you used it on to keep it waterproof? Like I said before, it's been four or five months since I originally waterproofed this and uh, it's still doing a really good job. So something you only have to do probably once a year depending on how much you get out and about. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tagging along in this video. If you like the video, definitely give it a thumbs up below. I'd love it if you'd comment and subscribe. If you haven't done so yet, connect with me on one of my social accounts. I'd love to connect with you guys and hear from you guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next video or we'll see you outdoors. Take care.